My name is Daryl Davis. I've spent the last few decades of my life trying to meet hate with love, becoming friends with people whom many would think should be my worst enemies. I've now watched over 200 white supremacists I've engaged with choose to leave a life of hate. But when I started, I didn't know I'd convert anyone. I just wanted to find the answer to a question. How can you hate me when you don't even know me? I wanted to know how they came to see the world in a way so hateful and foreign to my own experience. We don't always see the world the way it really is. As a psychotherapist, I know this well. We might think we perfectly understand the world around us, but our brain doesn't make it that easy. Instead, we have mental shortcuts that help us make more sense of our environment. We categorize and conceptualize. Shortcuts allow us to function in the world, ensuring our safety and survival. But in some situations, they don't work right, leading us to simplify the world in an inaccurate way, ignoring nuance and complexity. Cognitive bias is what happens when we make inaccurate judgments based on those mental shortcuts. Bias can lead to bad decision-making and flattening other people into stereotypes, rather than seeing each person we interact with as a unique individual. Changing the hearts and minds of people who hated me because of the color of my skin required getting them to see where and how they have come to view the world incorrectly. But to do that genuinely, I had to be open-minded and willing to interrogate how I came to my worldview as well. One cognitive bias is called fundamental attribution error. That's when we judge someone else's character based on their actions without applying context. Yet we justify our own similar behaviors based on reasoning that only we are aware of. We can't all get along with others when we hold each other to different standards. That's a recipe for hostility. When someone else is late or slow to get something done, they're lazy. If someone else does a bad job at a task, they're stupid. But if you're late or slow, it's because you had something else that needed to be done first. If you did a bad job at a task, it's because you didn't have all the information you needed. Another cognitive bias is hostile attribution bias, the practice of assuming negative intent behind someone's treatment of us. If we perceive ambiguous words or actions in a negative way, even if there was no negative intent, it can lead to misunderstanding and conflict. If a cashier gives you the wrong change at a store, were they trying to cheat you? Or did they just make a mistake? There's also in-group, out-group bias when we show preference for our own group while showing disdain for others without just cause. Studies have shown that when people are split up into groups of any kind, their tribal instincts are triggered, even when those groups are invented arbitrarily. People look positively on those within their group and negatively on those outside it. Group members judge their opponents to be less likable, less fair, less trustworthy, and less competent. And if members of an in-group express too much sympathy towards members of the out-group, they risk being expelled. Here we see the roots, not just of racism, but of bigotry, political polarization, and social conflict of all types. In one experiment, when a teacher split her classroom into blue-eyed and brown-eyed students and told them their character was determined based upon the color of their eyes, it quickly led to conflict being pro-human and embracing our common humanity helps us to overcome this form of bias. And there's confirmation bias, when we find ways to make new information fit our pre-existing notions, ignoring or rejecting information that should make us doubt them. In my experience changing minds, this is one of the hardest things to overcome People who have been ingrained in hate since childhood don't want to hear that the way they've been viewing the world is wrong. Success relies on getting them to eventually stop confirming and start being open to hearing ideas that may challenge their way of thinking. These people whose minds I've seen change should teach a lesson to all of us. 
any one of us could have ways of seeing the world that are incorrect. Wouldn't we be better off if we knew what they were? These are just a few of the cognitive biases that interfere with our perceptions. But with conscious effort, we can work to overcome them. Be sharp. Stop before responding to someone. Hear what they are saying. Become aware of your automatic reactions. Reevaluate the situation based on what you know about your cognitive biases and reconsider your perspective. Cognitive bias is part of being human. We all make mental shortcuts. How has it affected your decision-making?